Hey, welcome to episode 16 of the Learning React in 2021 series. This episode, we're going to be talking about Axios and integrating Axios into React so that we can use it in the application that we've been building. And we're also going to talk about spinners and loaders and a little bit of stuff about uh, how to make things more efficient in our code. So step number one, Axios, we need to get that library into our project. Well, uh, if you're looking for the link to this page, I've got that down in the description. The GitHub repo, I've got that link down in the description as well, the one for Axios and the GitHub repo for this series. And we're in episode 16. That's the branch that you want to switch to to get the finished code from this video. Okay, jumping back into my code, I want to add Axios into my project. So Axios is a library that allows you to do fetch calls. XML HTTP request calls. It works both in Node and in the browser. In the browser, it relies on XML HTTP request. On the server, if you're running Node.js, it uses the HTTP module from Node. We're building stuff with React, so we're building single page applications. And that means that we're going to be running in the browser, so it's going to be using the XML HTTP stuff in the background. Now, the code for Axios looks a lot like when you're using promises for fetch and you chain together the fetch with the then then catch the syntax is almost the same as that so let's add it to our project step number one so yarn add or npm install and axios that's what we're adding so that only takes a moment that will get added into our package.json file and if we look here inside of our dependencies there is Axios. Now it is installed. Great. That means it's in our node modules folder. It has become part of our project. And on the main page, which is, or in the main component, main.js, this is inside of our components folder, inside of the main folder, main.js. This is the file that we're working on. We just have to import the Axios package. So import Axios from Axios. And that's it. That is now imported, ready for us to use. And what I'm going to do as a demonstration is I'm going to replace the little bit of code that I've got here inside of the people switcher. So in my use effect, when the main component loads, I want to get the people data or the films data or the planets data, depending on what my route currently is. So if I'm on the people one, that's where I'm doing this fetch. I'm just going to replace this with Axios so you see how it works. Okay, we have Axios imported. So that is actually the thing that we're going to run. So we're going to say axios.get. Now with Axios, you can do get, post, delete, put, patch. All of the different HTTP methods are available in Axios. Or you can call Axios itself pass in a URL and a config object like this, um, it will default to get. So if you just do Axios URL, it's going to do a get. This looks a lot like fetch with a URL inside of it. Now, I like to be a little bit more explicit when I'm doing this, so I will actually use the get method just so when I read the code, I know explicitly that yes, I'm using get. I don't have to know what Axios does by default. Okay, now this returns a promise. So it's going to give me a then, and then I can tack on a catch. I'm just going to send uh, whatever the error object that comes back, console.error, I'm going to send it to that. Inside the then, the response object that we typically get. Now, when you do a fetch call, you get back a response object. Then you have to call response.json. Axios by default will assume that what's coming back or make best efforts to figure out what's coming back. JSON is its default. That's where it expects what it expects to get. This response object has a property inside of it called data. So my response dot data, that is going to be this object right here. So let's put our function inside of then data is going to be resp.data. Now Axios has a bunch of other things inside of here. 
there is a status property, there's a status text. So the status is the status code, there's the uh, response text property, so the word OK or whatever that is. Uh, there's also a headers object. You can get a request object, quite possibly. Um, yeah, you should be able to get from the response object, you can get the request. So resp.request uh, will get you the request object that you sent in, like whatever you defined here. So you can get the URL and stuff from that. Okay, now I've done this on one line just to show that you can, <clears throat> pardon me, that you can do it. And then we're just going to replicate what we did right here. Copy, paste, so data.results. Inside the data that's coming back, the data property from Axios, that is the data object that we are getting back from the server when we make the call to the Star Wars API. It has the results property inside of it, which is the array of the results. And that's what we're putting into our people. So save that. Great. That's going to update the people property. Right up here, our state variable people. That will be updated. And then that's going to be passed down right here to people and person. So that array is being passed down there. So we will need to start our server again that we shut down when we installed Axios. All right, that's up and running. Here we go. I can close the other tab. All right, let's take a look. In our network tab, we're going to be able to see, let's just clear everything out. When we switch to, to films, we're going to see the request for films. If I go to planets, I get the request for planets. If I go to people, I get the request for people. So all that's working fine. Only problem that we have here is, one, I don't have a spinner. So I want to add that. I want to be able to display the progress. The other issue I've got is, if I go back to films, it requests the data again, people again, planets again. So for my situation where there's only three sets of data and I'm saying it's just going to be limited to that, I'm not doing any pagination or additional requests for the same data, I want to be able to look at this and say, you know what, after I've got the data, I don't want to make the request again. This is just a waste of bandwidth. So that's poor performance in my app. I don't want to cause people data charges just because I didn't write a couple lines of code. So we're going to go back into main here and we can do this for all three of them, but we'll start with the people one. So inside of here, we're saying if we switch to the path people, we're going to make a request. Okay, but we're going to set people to put our results into there. It's going to start people off as an empty array and then we're filling that array. So as soon as we've got something in there, I don't need to do another request. I can come in here. Now this could just be all one if statement, but I'm going to do a second one just to highlight it. If people.length is zero. If it's zero, there's nothing that I've requested yet, and I'm going to make the call like that. So we've wrapped our call to Axios inside of this. Now we're saying, okay, we've got another dependency. That's fine. We can add it. I could come in here. I can add the dependency for people and that's going to be fine because I'm limiting myself here. I'm making sure that I'm not making the call every time. So if I didn't put this limit in here, this is going to cause sort of an infinite loop. Every time I get results, I'm replacing what was in there before we will eventually want to do something like compare results, update people only if changed. You know, we could do something like that inside of here. So that's going to require us to do deep comparison in the objects or inside the array. However, for now, this is going to work. If people length equals zero, do this. Otherwise, we're just going to skip past it. We can do the same thing here for films. If films length equals zero, then go ahead and do the request. So we had 
solved the re-rendering issue last time, but we hadn't really stopped all these extra requests from being made. So we were still getting poor data usage. And this is going to be planets instead of people. Now, when I save this, it's going to tell me, hey, you've got a bunch of things, a bunch of dependencies. We need to add those in for our use effect. Films and planets. There we go. And now we're not going to cause an infinite loop because we're using those values to make sure that we're not replacing it once we've done it once. All right, let's clear this out, test it again. Films, people, planets. There, great. We're not calling it again because we do have the data. Come back to the root, I refresh the site. Go to films, we get the data. Very first time, there it fills in. People, there it is. Planets, we got it. But now, as I navigate around, I'm never doing the fetch again. And that's what we want to see. All right, the other thing, the spinner. We're going to come down here and we'll start with the people one. Inside of people, when I first display this, the first time this is rendered, props is going to contain list. List is going to be an empty array. So down here, we're going to write no people if there are no people. We're going to loop through the data set. But I also want to display some sort of loading mechanism. Now, I built this just before recording. Very basic spinner. I have a div with the class overlay that just basically fills the entire width and height of the screen position fixed with partially transparent black. And then inside of that, I'm using display flex to center another div with the text color white. And I've added an animation that makes it sort of pulse. So if you want to see that, that's in the CSS here, there's the overlay. Just fill the whole screen, partially transparent, display flex, center in both directions. The spinner has big text and an animation that just sort of loops through changing the alpha value of the text from 100% to 10%. So it's pulsing. It does once a second, it pulses. And you could do a little bit of a delay. You could say, Okay, there's going to be a 0.3, or a, yeah, we'll do 0.3 seconds of a delay in between each time, and we'll say it takes 0.6 seconds to loop through. So one full second, or 0.9 seconds for each iteration. Okay, there's the CSS for the spinner. There's the basic HTML for the spinner. And I do want to draw attention to this right here. We've got props being passed into spinner. And we're writing out props.children inside the div. So what is props.children? Coming back to people, if I were to put spinner here like this, so it's got an opening and a closing tag, I've got to import that. So we'll import spinner. There we go. That's saved. Now I have this. Whatever I put inside of spinner. That is going to be my content. Inside of spinner, props.children, that is built in. I didn't have to define it or do anything special. With React, props.children is whatever I put in here. So I'm going to write loading, or we could write it all in caps, something like that. I save it. Now on the people page, I have this Spinner. There we go. I've got that little spinner, that thing. And what I want to do now is only display it while the data is loading. How do we do that? Well, I'm going to use state. And I don't have it imported on this page yet. So we'll import use state from React. Down inside of here, we'll create a new variable called loaded. And then set loaded, and its default value is going to be false. No, your data is not loaded yet. I'm going to need a use effect. 
I'm going to run a function and I'm going to change set loaded to true. And when am I going to do that? When there is a change to list. So props.list, that is the array. When this first loads, it is an empty array. As soon as it's loaded once, I'm no longer loading. So at this point, I'm going to set it to true. That is going to be my trigger to remove this. So I'm just going to wrap spinner inside of an expression where I'm only going to render sprinter, spinner if, if it's not loaded. Show the spinner. Okay, we have to import use effect. That's saved. Now, this is going to remove it really fast um, on my connection. Somebody with a slower connection, yeah, they're going to see the effect. So I come back here, I refresh. So I've cleared out people data. Now I click on here. So there was that little blink. To test it, I can change my throttling to fast 3G. Loading all the content. There we go. I still didn't really see it. It still came down really, really fast. So what I'm going to do is inside of here, I'm going to call set timeout to call set loaded after a minimum, let's say 800 milliseconds and we'll pass true in as the value to pass to that function. So instead of just calling it directly, I'm setting sort of a minimum value. So people will see that it's there, but I mean, 0.8 seconds is not a long time. You're interacting with the user, so they will see this thing for at least that long on the page. There we go. And we can implement the exact same thing in all three sections just by copying this bit of data right here, this bit of functionality, along with the import. We can go into planets, we can go into films. We're just adding that little bit. We're going to import use state and use effect. And then down inside of here, we're going to say if not loaded, we want spinner. And what text do you want to display inside of there? Loading planets. And we'll have to import the spinner as well up at the top. Okay, loading planets, people loading, and films. We could do the same thing so it says loading films or some other custom message. We've built our spinner in a way that it will accommodate whatever message we want to put in here. So whatever we write inside of planets or people or films, that's the message that this thing is going to display. So a very customizable spinner that we've got here. Okay, and back up to main, we have now our spinner happening. We've got our loading limiter based on this parameter. Um, if you had data that was being constantly changed, then it would make sense to do some other sort of comparison before you call set people, because you don't want to get into an infinite loop, but maybe there's some property inside your data that you can check to see Oh, okay, the ID of the first thing in the array is different. Therefore, I've got a new data set. I'll go ahead and update that. All right. Oh, uh, we've got on planet spinner is not defined. I think we just fixed that one. Yeah, we added that in there. Okay, and that's it. So that's Axios, that's spinners, that's using props children, and that's how to optimize your bandwidth usage when you're making fetch calls. Hope that helps you out. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. And as always, thanks for watching.